Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Kiri Varadhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Kiri Varadhari Jashoda Nandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Vrajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai, Mr. Pad Paramahamsa Parajika Charja Ashto Tarata Shri Srimad Divine Grace Srila AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Is Gambi Bidi founder of Charya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Parajika Charja Ashto Tarata Shri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. Ananda Koti Vaishnavinda Ki Jai. Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Kantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय So before we begin, I think I'll see if I can find something about Virabhadra here. Hopefully there's something in that. Let's see one. Okay. Sorry. Marks. Sorry, I should have done this earlier. Nope, nothing here. All right, you're gonna give me Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur describes Biravadra Goswami as the direct son of Nityananda Prabhu and a disciple of Janava Devi. His real mother was Basuda. In the Gauraganad Lipik uh, verse 67, he is mentioned as an incarnation of Kisirodaksha Vishnu. Therefore, Biravadra Goswami is none different from Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 11.8, Parput. Ah, thank you. Okay, so he's the son of Nityananda. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Okay. So, we didn't do Om Namo. Right? Is, we didn't do that yet. Did we? We did do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. On the sixth day of November, 2023, in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Candle 7, The Science of God, Chapter 2, Hiranyakashipu, King of the Demons, text number 41. Bhutani, Thais, Tyre, Nijayoni, Karmabir, Babanti, Kali, Nababanti, Sarvashaha, Natatra, Hatma, Prakritav, Api, Stitas, Tasya, Gunair, Anyatamo, Hibadyate, Bhutani Taistaya Nijayoni Karmabhir, Bhavanti Kale Nambhavanti Sarvashaha Natatva Hatma Prakatava Pistitas Tasyagunayar Anyatamohi Badhyate Bhutani Taishtaya Nijayoni Karma Bhir Bhavanti Kale Nambhavanti Sarvashaha Natatva Hatma Prakatava Pistitas Tasya Gunayaran Yatamohi Badhyate Bhutani Taishtaya Nijayoni Karma Bhir Bhavanti Kale Nabhavanti Sarvashaha Natatva Hatma Prakatava Pistitas Tasya gunayaran yatamohi badhyate. Bhutani taishtaya nijayoni karma bir. Bhavanti kale na bhavanti sarvasaha. Natatva hatma pakatava pistitas. Tasya gunayaran yatamohi bandhyate. Bhutani taishta nijayoni karma bir. Bhavanti kare na bhavanti sarvashaha. Natatva hatma pakatava pistitas. Tasya gunayaran yatamohi bandhyate. Vira, you want to try? Bhutani taishta nijayoni karma bir. Bhavanti kare na bhavanti sarvashaha. Natatva hatma pakatava pistitas. Tasya gunayaran yatamohi bandhyate. Prabhupada, you want to start? Bhutani taishta nijayoni karma bir. 
Bhutani Thai style Nijo Yoni Karma Beer Bhavanti Kari Nabhavanti Sarvashaha Natatva Hatma Pakatava Pistitas Tasyagunaran Yatamohi Bhajjate Vijay Bhutani Thai style Nijo Yoni Karma Beer Bhavanti Kare Nabhavanti Sarvashaha Natatva Hatma Pakatava Pistitas Tasyagunaran Yatamohi Bhajjate Maruti, you want to try? Bhutani Thai style Nijo Yoni Karma Beer Bhavanti Kale Nabhavanti Sarvashaha Natatva Hatma Pakatava Pistitas Tasyagrana Ranyatamohi Bhaddite Bhutani All the bodies of the living entities Thai Thai Their own respective Nijayoni Causing their own bodies, karma bihi, by past activities, bhavanti, appear, kale, in due course of time, nabhavanti, disappear, sarvashaha, in all respects, na, not, tatra, there, ha, indeed, atma, the soul. Prakotao, within this material world. Api, although. Stitaha, situated. Tathyaha, of her, the material energy. Gunai, by different modes. Anyatamaha, most different. He, indeed. Badyate, is bound. Translation, every conditioned soul receives a different type of body according to his work. And when the engagement is finished, the body is finished. Although the spirit soul is situated in subtle and gross material bodies in different forms of life, he is not bound by them, for he is always understood to be completely different from the manifested body. Purport. Here, is, here it is very plainly explained that God is not responsible for the living entities accepting different types of bodies. One has to accept a body according to the laws of nature and one's own karma. Therefore, the Vedic injunction is that a person engaged in material activities should be given directions by which he can intelligently apply his activities to the service of the Lord to become free from the material bondage of repeated birth and death. Sukarmana Tamabhyarcha Siddhim Vindati Manava. Vindati Manava. This is a quote from Bhagavad Gita, which says that by, by his own work, by following his, this performing his duty, if he does it in a Krishna conscious way, he can become perfect and become liberated. If he worships the Lord through that work. The Lord is always ready to give directions. Indeed, his directions are elaborately given in the Bhagavad Gita. If we take advantage of these directions, then in spite of our being conditioned by the laws of material nature, we shall become free to attain our original constitution. We should have firm faith that the Lord is supreme and that if we surrender to him, he will take charge of us and indicate how we can get out of material life and return home back to Godhead. Without such surrender, one is obliged to accept a certain type of body according to his karma, sometimes as an animal, sometimes as a demigod, and so on. Although the body is obtained and lost in due course of time, the spirit soul does not actually mix with the body, but is sub subjugated by the particular modes of nature with which he is sinfully associated. Spiritual education changes one's consciousness so that one simply carries out the orders of the Supreme Lord and becomes free from the influence of the modes of material nature. Om Jnana Timanandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmidatam Mena 
Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, and my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance to him and all members of Sri Parampara. Now, forgive me if I'm not 100% sure, but this uh, is still Yamaraj speaking, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So this is Hiranyakashipu relating this conversation of Yamaraj. So it's still a Hiranyakashipu Gita. And I just, there's no other way of describing it. He's giving second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. He's <laughs> and uh, and Yamaraj here is describing how the living entity is entangled in this material world. Prabhupada quotes two verses in the uh, purport, both from Bhagavad Gita. This is a verse from the 18th chapter describing how uh, if one works within his, his, his own dharma, with Varnashram dharma, but he's giving the results of the activities to the Lord, he's worshipping the Lord with his act, abhyarcha, archa, he's worshipping with his activities, then he can also attain perfection. In other words, even while performing one's duties, uh, responsible duties in the world, one can become uh, completely perfect. And again, I think I forgot, Om Agyanatimarandasya. Om Gyana Tibarandasya Gyana Nana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmidatam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Sri Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer Muhammad obeisance to him and all members of Sri Parampara. Okay. So, uh, and then this other one, Mame Vipa Bhadnyate Maya Metam Tanantiyate, that's very famous from Daiviyesha Gunamayi, that this material world. Is a composer of the three modes of nature is divine, Daivi Gunamahi, because it comes from me. Gunamahi, Mamamaya Dorotyaya. And it's impossible to cross over it on your own without surrendering to me. But one who surrenders unto me can easily cross beyond it. Very important verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Now, Prabhupada also refers, although he doesn't quote the Sanskrit, to a verse which I, I always found extremely revealing and important, and that is in the 13th chapter, Purushak Pukati Stohi, Bhunkte Pukati Jan Gunan, Karanan Gudasangasya, Sadasadyoni Janmasu. That the living entity uh, who is an, uh, trying to be an enjoyer and therefore is known as the Purusha, or by, na- by nature we're Prakriti, we're energy. We learned that in the 7th chapter, Apade Mitasthan Pagana Vidime Param, that beyond these eight material energies, which are of course material and dead, they're not alive, they're upper Prakriti, there's the Para Prakriti, the superior energy which consists of the living entities who are supporting this material, en- material world, sustaining it, just like we're sustaining our own body, and trying to exploit it for sense gratification. So, then in the 13th chapter, he, uh, Krishna gives this verse that really uh, is so revealing. Purushak Prakriti Stohi, the living entity within Prakriti, within the material energy. Purushak Prakriti, Bhunkte Prakriti Jan Guna. Now, Bhunkte often means enjoy, but it can also mean just experience. Because he's experiencing Prakriti Jan Guna, uh, the results of uh, his relationship with the three modes of nature. Uh, that's born out of Prakriti. Prakriti Jan Gunan, Karanam Guna Sangosya. The cause of his next birth in good or bad bodies, uh, Sadasad Yoni Janmasu, is how he relates to those modes. Right? Karanam Guna Sangha. Karanam Guna Sangha. So we are determining our own destiny. That's, that's what's important here. That, that with knowledge, this is the key element, we need to be instructed, as it's explained in the purport, by Krishna himself or through someone who is representing Krishna uh, honestly, and uh, how we can live in this world, because we're in this body for a certain term. But because it's a human body, if we get the right association, we can use our senses, mind, and intelligence in such a way that we are progressing on the path, on the bhakti marga back to Godhead. And that means that we're progressively becoming detached from whatever configuration these modes are presenting, that we're not trying to enjoy them, but rather we're using the body and we're using whatever else comes to us in the service of the Lord. This is, this is described by uh, Rupa Goswami in his uh, Bhakti Rasamana Sindhu. Sabo pari vinimuktam nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevinam bhakti ruttama uchite that free of false designations that are surrounding the body, like our place of birth and the family and all of these things, free of that, identifying ourselves wholly and solely 
as a pure spirit soul's eternal servant of Krishna, part and parcel of Krishna. Then, with the senses, we have serving the master of the senses. Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam, Bhakta Ruchite. Right? In other words, Krishna is Rishikesha. He's actually the master of our senses. But, we're not, but in, the, in, in Maya, we don't use him for his service, and so there's, we, we suffer in this world. But when we use those senses in his service, then we're properly situated. And another verse by Rupa Goswami describing what real vairagya is. Anasakta se vishayan yataham upayunjata nirbanda krishna sambanda yuktam vairagya muchate. Yukta vairagya means detachment in, 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 within bhakti, uh, uh, trying to serve Krishna. Because there's also uh, the mayavadis, the impersonalists, who try to become detached by force of will, by austerity, so that they can get liberation. That's not yukta vairagya. Because they see everything directly related to Krishna, his name, his form, the prasadam, and everything, as part of maya. That's a this material. This is their, their, their fallacy. But when something is used in Krishna's service, including our own bodies, it becomes spiritualized. Because it's in contact. It's just like the old iron in the fire. right? Our, our ears, our eyes, every, all of our senses, our mind, becomes Krishnaized. Prabhupada's famous word. I, I never agreed with that editorial, uh, making it in a Krishnaized. I like Prabhupada's Krishnaized, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Krishnaized. That looked like this building. This building became Krishnaized by the efforts of the devotees when they bought it. There's some wonderful pictures, uh, Purusha, I think he took him at the time, he's been around so long, of them actually renovating this place and creating all of this, these moldings and this, this uh, wonderful sculpture and turning it into a temple. So that which was a warehouse or a movie house or whatever the heck it was, or just an empty building, uh, it has, has become spiritualized. You walk in here and everything relates to Krishna. And so you're immediately your Krishna consciousness starts just by, by coming inside the deities and, the, and the, of course, the sounds, the kirtan and everything. There's, there's mundane sound, there's mundane buildings, there's mundane statues, there's mundane food, there's all these other things which keep you bound here. But when, by the knowledge that's come that Srila Prabhupada gave us, how to create this Krishna conscious atmosphere, of course, so much having to do with the deities, installation, worship, everything, then it becomes... Uh, uh, a transcendental abode that can help us become Krishna conscious. But our own bodies have to be, uh, become temples of God. Now, that's why we're, we're putting the tilak on, right? Because it'd be, oh, this is the temple of God. It's meant to be for God's service. Our whole problem is that we're conditioned to try to use the senses and mind to enjoy separately from Krishna. And that keeps us bound here. That, that creates, that pl- creates the, the knots in the heart, the famous riddhya grunti, Right? These, these are uh, desires to enjoy. They get implanted in the mind, and then we don't even know they're there. But then when the, the sense object comes, or the variety of sense objects that, that, that remind, you know, uh, is suitable for one of these planted desires, could be from a previous life, oh, suddenly we're attracted, and we try to enjoy that way. And this is what's going on. The more we enjoy sense gratification, the more we're planting those desire seeds, the more we're tightening those knots. And those have to all be cut in order for us to get liberation and go back to Godhead. So the process of bhakti uh, cuts those knots, and they, it ties new knots, knots to Krishna. We have to be attached. <laughs> We're going to be, take that attachment to maya and turn it to Krishna. That's the, the process of bhakti in, a, in, a, uh, in a, a, a nutshell. Now, it's interesting that all of this is all, you know, you don't hear any glorification of Krishna here you know, Vishnu, right? This is all stuff about how the soul is, is, is eternal and uh, how we, we transmigrate and all this. Because it's Aranyakashi spoo speaking. And I, I always, I'm going to investigate it more and read some of the other commentary from Vishnat Chakravarti and everything. But here he is. He's demon number one in the universe, right? Prahlad has given him that, right? Oh, best of the demons. <laughs> So that means he's f- fully in the, in, you know, yes, he's Jaya Vijaya, so ultimately he's going to go back and return to, to, to Vaikuntha. But now he's completely covered in that mood of Ranyakashipu. Otherwise it wouldn't be fun to fight with him. I mean, that's one of the reasons that Vishnu created this, right? So he'd have, be able to enjoy fighting with some sincere demons. So here's Ranyakashipu who's enraged that his, his brother was killed by Vishnu in the form of Varaha. 
right? You know the past time. He's already been killed. And he's now uh, consoling uh, Hiranyakashipu's sons, Hiranyaksha's sons, who are his nephews, and their mother. I forgot her name. Uh, so how is he in console him? Basically telling him that, oh, you know, they're not, he, he's not dead. You know, the soul is, he's not, he's a soul. And uh, he's left the body and gone on to somewhere else. And this is just what happens. He's giving standard uh, explanation of, of the eternality of the soul and how the soul gets bound in this world. But you shouldn't think that, that uh, he doesn't exist somewhere. And this is, I think, has been explained in some of the previous classes. How this is, this is how you can console someone, who by just quoting from second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. I did it with my mother when my father died. I read her day and you know, and you know, then the fact that oh, he was in another body. It was very, very enlivening, because the whole idea is oh, he ceased to exist. No, he's going on, you know. And the fact that I was a devotee, you know, maybe not a pure devotee, but a devotee then uh, that helps also. The, as Prabhupada said in many places, the best thing you can do for your parents or any of your other relatives is become a good devotee. Why? Because you're in their mind. They're thinking about you. Maybe not always, but they're, they're, you're in their mind. Especially when you die, you know, if you die first, they'll remember, oh, yeah, he was, he was the cousin who was a Hare Krishna. That's all auspicious for them. Right? So if you're, if you're the better devotee you are, just like with Prahlad, Prahlad, what, what, was, the, what was the boon? One, you asked for two boons for extra credit and get the second one, but the main one that's so famous. Yeah. Please deliver my father. And Prabhupada, I think, he compared that with the, you know, Jesus Christ. Saying, Please forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You know? So uh, Nishinga said, not only your father, but so many generations, I forget how many, 10 generations back, 10 generations forward. And we find that with Banasara, and of course Bali, who's a great devotee ultimately. He kind of was a little covered by the demon thing, right? He was working with the demons. And he just <laughs> but then when Vamana came and uh, tricked him, you know, and, <laughs> and he had to give everything, he did the right thing. You know, when, when it, we had the two steps, he covered that, the whole, when am I going to put my third step, put it on my head. So he surrendered completely. And in this way, he became the emblem of Atmani Vedada. And he was the exalted descendant of Pallad, although he was a little covered there. Now, Banasur wasn't on that level. You know, Banasur was <laughs> kind of steep, more in, he was worshipping Shiva, he had a thousand arms, you know, and he wanted, you know. But when he was chastised by Krishna, because he, he eventually had to fight Krishna. You remember that Usha and Aniruddha pastime? So Usha was, was his daughter, and somehow she's having an affair. How did that happen? You know, because you know, Chitraleka brought him in from out of space. You know. So it was a whole thing. And then he was enraged by that, and then you know, Krishna came and fought, because Aniruddha was part of the clan, so all of the, the, they all came from, the Yadus came from Dwarka to rescue him. And, and he, he lost... Uh, what was it, 998 arms, right? I think he left him with two arms. <laughs> but he left them. He didn't kill them, you know, because he was descendant of, descendant of Pallad. So that, uh, that's part of what uh, is going on here, and that uh, Harundi Kachipu is, is uh, uh, in, encouraging him that, they, that he's still alive, and this, uh, you, this uh, little... Um, Yamaraj manifestation. He's in this, the, the, the form of a boy, right? He's a youngster. So he's giving the, you know, the, the same kind of idea. And describing how the body, you know, how we get the body and actually the body is advanced. But the soul has nothing to do with creation, dissolution. So that soul, who is actually Aranyaksha, he's still, he's still alive. You know, he's in another body. He hasn't died like that. So he's consoling. But what I, what I, it seems to me, now I'm going to confirm this idea, that this is kind of, uh, he, he doesn't take his own advice. He's lamenting, he's more than lamenting, he's furious at the, at the demise of Haranyaksha, right? So he's, <laughs> Prabhupada puts in, the, in one of his translations here, because he often inserts some of the purport, you know, that therefore one should not, uh, and this is, he's got Haranji Kashipu saying this, therefore one should not lament the demise of one loved one or something. Well, that's what I'm doing. 
lamenting or being infuriated. It's the same same thing. Um, but the, 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 you, we have to remember, and uh, this is my own uh, perception here. I may, I'm going to try to confirm it. That one of the first qualities of the demons is dumba. Now, Prabhupada always defines dumba as pride, and sometimes it is false pride. So the false is a, is, is a very important part of that. And that is that uh, the classic example, I always call it, because I, I, some things stick out from my previous life. This is from when I was a kid. There was a magazine called Life Magazine. Prabhupada, do you remember Life Magazine? Prabhupada? Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Yes. It, you have to be a little older. I don't think, I think it's gone out of business. It was a big color, full color magazine, big, big format, you know. And it was, there was life, there was life and time. Time was for more of the hard news. Life was for, was for more of these special articles that they could really illustrate with a lot of pictures. So they, they did a special on the, the, the New York Mafia, I swear, you know. And they had all these pictures of these guys. And they all looked miserable, you know, they were angry and you know, because they're all murderers, you know. But I knew for a fact from other sources that they're all mostly Catholics, you know, because they're Italian guys and everything. And they go to church. They go to church. They're very, you know, because they want to they look like they're uh, pious, you know, worshipers of God, you know. So that's, of course, Kamsa is the same thing. That's what worked with him, Right. Vasudev was trying to appeal. He was giving them the same thing, you know, that, that, that uh, you know, uh, anyway, he was, he was giving them, but he didn't work. And finally he said, it's not going to look good if you kill your sister on a, you know, on a, on a wedding day. She's not in danger. I will deliver to you all the children that are born, you know. So he said, yeah, that's a good calculation. It'll look bad. Everyone's looking at us. I'll get the shop off her head. That'll be bad for my image. It, what, it, what, <laughs> that was his consideration. So that's Dumba. Says uh, he fakes it being considerate, you know. So similarly, Hiranya Kashipu, he he felt some tie to these nephews and sister-in-law, you know. So he wanted to console them. So he had to give them the basic philosophy that the soul is eternal, that Hiranya really didn't die, you know. He's giving all that, uh, but he's not saying anything about worship of God because that's too much. <laughs> that would be too much. For him. So he's showing this dumba quality. It's hypocrisy. It's basically hypocrisy, which often involves pride, because why would you be a hypocrite if you weren't trying to fake it being something you weren't? You know? So that's, I think, what's going on here. Because you'll find in all of this incredible Haranyakashibu Gita, he never glorifies Vishnu or Narayan or anything like that. It's all about the soul, how the soul is eternal, and, you know, and, and, and associating with the modes, but the soul is never actually uh, injured. You know, when, when, when the body dies, it goes on to another body. So Hiranyaksha is enjoying somewhere else, you know, you should be able to, you know. So it's not, of course, to say they, they, it, it doesn't completely soothe one who is, is grieving, but it helps to realize that they're in another situation, that they're still alive, you know. So that's basically what all this is coming down to. But it's still, it's good instruction, and Prabhupada is giving some very... Uh, realized purpose here, and he's always quoting from Bhagavad Gita. I don't think you find Haranyakashi Pu quoting from Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> it may be the same philosophy, but it's not going to quote Krishna. So that's that's what's what's happening here. And for our, you know, just taking the philosophy for what it is, uh, it's important to hear the, the, this periodically and renew it, so that we don't allow ourselves to be. Uh, you know, intrigued by, by, by any, any temporary configuration of the material energy. We should, it, it, all, it all helps for us to uh, stay strict in devotional service. And that, yeah, the modes are so active. You know, I always thought this is probably the last place on earth that you would consciously found a brahmachari ashram, you know, two blocks from the Southern California beach, and you don't know, m many of you, I think you maybe, re maybe remember, you probably remember, they, on July 4th, every July 4th, before they outlawed drinking on the beach, they would always have, they would be, everyone would get drunk, and then one, then one day there was this huge rumble. There was, there was a, two, and there was a big fight on there, and the cops had to come and everything, and it was a big mess, you know. And you'd always see all the trash all over the lawns, you know, people up all night, you know, celebrating the Independence Day, you know. So that's, this is what you got here. 
<laughs> it's, not, it's not that they picked out, yeah, this is the ideal place, you know. They, ha they had another place picked out, which had been a uh, Jewish ceremony. There was nice buildings, outbuildings, you know, we could have a big ashram right on it. But once they found out it was the Hare Krishnas, they said, we'd rather burn it down. You maybe were here at the time. That's what I heard anyway. Yeah. Yeah, because the, one of the things is, in the early days, a fair number of the leaders of Hare Krishna were Jewish. And they, they, when, when everyone, anyone converts from Jewish to something else, they get very upset, you know, because they always feel that they're in a minority and everything. So uh, that happened. And, and then the same thing happened with the New York building they have now. When, they saw, when I, was, I was there, we were living in the 55th Street Temple, when they had to sell it because they didn't have it. It was so expensive to heat in the winter, 13000 a month just to heat it. And uh, it, it was a big burden. They didn't, and anyway, so they sold that. And eventually they, they wanted to buy this building out down in Brooklyn, which at that time was much cheaper you know, because it was more or less in a slum at that point. Now it's gentrified. Now it's worth 60, 70, 80 million dollars. They, they tried to sell it, but Jai White Swami saved it. So anyway, uh, that was also, had been a, uh, a uh, synagogue. And from that other, exp this experience, they said, okay. They, they bought it in the name of the Bharati uh, Association, which is now obviously an Indian thing, and it's certainly not ISKCON. You know that? You know that? It wasn't really in the name of ISKCON, although that was what, you know. The, so uh, anyway, that, so they were able to get it. Otherwise, again, they, would have said, they wouldn't have burned it down. They would have sold it to someone else, you know. So that's the situation. But uh, here, uh, you know, this is all very important philosophy for us to understand. And uh, Prabhupada, of course, in his purports, he always gives... You know, he'll quote the Bhagavad Gita and, and he'll talk about Krishna and, and, and how that's the only way. In order to come to the, the, this detachment and, uh, from the material energy, that you can't just do it by knowledge that, oh, I don't, I'm, I'm not a part of this material energy and I, I want to get liberation. It's impossible to do that, especially in this age. Even in, pre even in other ages, Prabhupada would always quote this, this verse about those who just want to merge into Brahman and get free, oh, from this birth, old age, disease, and death. That's their desire, you know, which is kicked out at the beginning of Bhagavatam. That's one of the Kaitava dharmas that's mentioned in the second verse of the Bhagavatam. This is from Sridhar Swami. Dharma projita kaitavotra. Here, in this Bhagavatam, we've kicked out all of these cheating dharmas, you know, which means material, mostly, you know, trying to go to heaven and all that business, you know, or get, that's, that you won't find that here. And, uh, but, but Sri Swami says, yes, and it includes the desire for one's own liberation. That, it's very interesting about that because, you know, uh, Prahlad is, is the ideal, where he's, where he's uh, saying, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not disturbed at all, not, you know, this wasn't my, my motive for worshiping you, but I'm not at all disturbed. Because at any time, I can chant your glories. He's speaking directly to Nishingadev. Here's this fragile little boy and this huge, you know, lion man who just killed Hiranyakashipu uh, and all thousands of his soldiers. It's a tremendous bloody scene, you know. And he was very furious, and even Lakshmi was afraid to approach him. You know, Brahma was offered his prayers from quite a distance, so did Shiva and a whole bunch of others, but no one, <laughs> he was still raging. So Pallad comes up and immediately he becomes Komala. Komala means gentle and soft, you know, because <laughs> here's his beloved Pallad. But Pallad has these incredible prayers, quoted many, and these, these, this one is quoted maybe more than all the others, because it shows the ideal uh, mentality of a devotee, of a, of a pure Vaishnava. So first he's saying, my dear Lord, I have absolutely no problem now because anywhere I am, I can, I can sing your glories and be immersed in an ocean of nectar. And Pallad proved it that even, even in the worst danger and the worst, you know, he was trying to be killed and crushed under the elephant so many ways. And he was just remembering Krishna and remembering his glories, remembering, and uh, he was protected. His mind was so far away from that, he wasn't, he wasn't injured or anything. He was completely protected. 
So he says, and right now, of course, I don't have any problem. Not udvijay. He uses the same word that he used when he first instructed his father. You know, there's so many instances where his father comes and he instructs him and his father gets enraged because he's glorifying Krishna. So the very first time uh, his father asked him, and he doesn't have any idea he's a Vaishnava because remember he was instructed in the womb, so he didn't, you know, he got a, his wife was given back, he gave birth. Oh, okay, we'll train him up to be another demon. Maybe he was the eldest son, whatever. So... Uh, he has, you know, he smells his head, he has it on his lap, what, you know, what did you learn today? What's the best thing you learned? So I said, tat sadhu manya. Now the word sadhu can mean saint, or it can mean the best, it can mean the best of something. It has that. Tat sadhu manya asodabhanya dehinam sadasa budvigna dhyama sadgahat hitvatma patam griyaman nakutam vanam gatoya dhadamashayeta. And as soon as he chanted this verse, uh, Hrindi Kashibu became enraged. But he didn't blame Prahlad, because he's just a little boy. He looked over at the teachers, and they were like, we didn't teach him that. You know, <laughs> they, to get off. they would, have, would have killed him. So anyway, it goes on. But what, what, he's using that same word, that what I learned, Father, <laughs> that the best thing I learned, oh, he didn't call him Father, he called him the best of the demons, Asuya by Dehinam, that all living entities, those embodied souls, that they're always disturbed, this word Udvija, is used. Sada uh, samud vigna, completely. Udvigna diyam. Their intelligence is so disturbed. Why? This is such an important instruction. Prabhupada quoted this all the time. A sadgrahat, because we're holding on for dear life to the impermanent. In other words, just think of this ocean here. You're out in a boat. So many people have boats. You see, they're in their, in their yards. They go out, you know, pleasure cruises, whatever. All right, you're in your boat, it springs a leak. You're far from the shore, what are you going to do? Okay, well, at least we have some life preservers. So you and a few people on the boat jump over in the life preservers. But they were cheap life preservers. They're not working, they're, they're getting wet, and, you know, we're sinking. Now what do I do? <laughs> you'd be udvijay, you'd be completely disturbed, because you're holding on to something that you think is going to save you, but it's not. It's fallible. Similarly, the body itself is fallible. And people we identify with, how can I make it comfortable, make it, you know, uh, you know longevity, there's people spend millions of dollars. So that's the impermanent. We're, we're t we, are, we ourselves are permanent, and we're taking shelter of the impermanent. And so we're dying repeatedly and disappointed and suffering. So uh, Prahlad, in two lines, he describes that. Their consciousness, their intelligence is always disturbed with udvigne, some udvigne, uh, because they're holding on to the impermanent. So what to do? Hit vatma patam griyamanda kupam. Give up this place that is an impediment to your spiritual advancement, namely the, the blind well of material fa materialistic family life. Griyamanda kupam. All right, now what I do? I've left, I've left my family. I've left that, that whole uh, Mayak scene. Vanam gato, go to the forest. It's understood he means Vrindavan. And take shelter of Hari. Oh boy, that was like a whip. You know, the very, the very person who killed my brother. You know, so how did this happen? You know. So now, the, after the whole episode, right, and now Hiranyakashibu is dead, thousands of demonic soldiers are dead, and now he, uh, uh, he uses the same word. I am never udvija. I am never disturbed. My intelligence is never disturbed. Because whenever I want, which is always, I'm always chanting your glories and I'm experiencing the bliss of Krishna consciousness and freedom from anxiety. But, now here's the key. It says, Shochetato, but I'm lamenting. Why are you lamenting? I thought you were chanting the glories of Shochetato, Vimokachetata, Indriyata, Maya, Sukhaya, Badamudvahato, Vimuda. And this is the, the, one of the inspirational verses for the whole Sankirtan movement. It reflects Lord Chaitanya's and Prabhupada's mood. He says, uh, I am lamenting for these foolish rascals, uh, what is he called, Vimudas, who have turned away from you. This is a constant theme in the Bhagavad Gita, turn their face away from you. The Mukhachetasa Indriyarta, for the sake of the Indriya Priti, for sense gratification. Maya Sukhaya, illusory and flickering happiness. 
That's like the Bhagavad Gita, my favorite verse. Many of you will recognize it. Yehi sangsparjaja boga dukha yonaya evate ajanda banta konte anate shuramate buddha. Intelligent persons do not take part in sense pleasures, which would mean the contact of the senses with the sense objects. O son, uh, o son of Kunti, such pleasures are the sources of all miseries, and they have a beginning and an end, and so the wise do not delight in them. What do they delight in? Krishna consciousness. You know. So that's, that's uh, Pallad's instruction there. But that, uh, you only will find the first half, uh, or not the first half, you'll, you'll, you'll find some, you know, the preliminary understanding, I'm not the soul, I'm the body, I'm not the body, I'm the soul, you know, so I shouldn't lament, you know. But not, not, nothing like chanting the glories of the Lord or taking shelter for thee. So that's, that's what we're, we're witnessing here. And it's all very good instruction, and Prabhupada expands on it. Uh, in the purport, and uh, you know, but in the end, Harini Kashipu will leave this engagement and go on to try to plan how to uh, kill kill Vishnu by uh, persecuting the Brahmins and doing all the other stuff that we learned from previous verses, and he'll be slain. But well, of course, eventually, after a few births, he'll go back to his post in Vaikuntha. All right, any comments, questions? Uh, Hare Krishna. Okay, uh, we have a few locals, and you can come in. Okay, Vijay. Yes. Okay, Prabhu. Okay, Hare Bhu. Thank you for the wonderful class, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Not as wonderful as yours. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because when I meet people on book distribution, they may not be um, receptive to the different books, but when they see coming back, that really triggers them. They they want to find more about you know reincarnation. Yeah, yeah. So I started bringing more, and also I've been meeting a lot of people that are going through some uh, stressful times. You know, they lost their husband and so on. And I met this one uh, Mataji yesterday, and she said, you know, my son they they say he has a mental uh, disorder, but mm -hmm. he she said, but I know something deeper than that. No. So I, I told her about, you know, karma and reincarnation or condition, things like that. She said, you know, that makes more sense. And she said, if my mother was alive, she would never let me have this book. Like that. Really? <laughs> so she, she took a coming back, and then she gave a nice donation, and she also took uh, a few other books. But I think a lot of people there now are becoming uh, interested in, you know, reincarnation. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and that, I mean, I remember when that book was produced, you know, that... That book was uh, conceived. We had a whole team led by Mukunda Maharaj of, um, I forget what it was called, you know, books of, of the Vedas from modern times, something like that. And that was, I think, the first one that was done. And I think I mentioned this in some class. During the 70s, it started to come out. These uh, books, especially Ian Stevenson, who was, a, I, I think I mentioned him before. In fact, if, in Back to Godhead is a good source of some of these. Jayat Whiteswami wrote a wonderful article about reincarnation in Back to Godhead. Because you have to remember, Back to Godhead you don't see so much anymore. But Back to, but back to Godhead was a basic uh, literature that we were, were distributing. And it got up, we, we printed a million issues one, one month because the devotees were distributing them by, by the hundreds. They were going out. And um, so Jayat Whiteswami, I can share this article with you. It's all in the database. All of these the BTGs are there. Uh, based on what I mentioned, uh, 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 Ian Stevenson's research in India of some children who remembered their, you know, who, 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 with most detail their, their previous lives. And he researched it. He actually went to, this, to the town that they mentioned and they tried to contact the people they mentioned, and he, and he confirmed it. There were, there were several dozen cases like that. And he published the book, which was revolutionary at the time. And then it started to come out this whole thing with near-death experiences in the hospital. And people who are, you know, they're on life support, they're unconscious, supposedly, but then they describe which doctor came in and what they did, you know, like that. <laughs> well, how did that happen? So the idea that this, you know, that this person is not the body but the soul, which is the basic idea, and, and, of course, reincarnation. Because as soon as you get that, the soul is eternal, it has to be reincarnation. And we have this succession of bodies. So, that, yeah, that, that's a wonderful book. And, of course, there's, there's uh, stuff in there that's written by Prabhupada Conversation. They wove that in. But the last chapter, you know, Mukunda Maharaj wrote, don't come back. You know, that's all Krishna conscious stuff. So those, that, that book was very, very effective and is still very popular. 
Oh, you have something? Okay. We have another one, Vijay, but you're in the queue. Yes, I can wait. No problem. Hare Krishna, thank you for the class. Um, you mentioned uh, that um, the species uh, thing of demon is a dump, is a doom. Dumb. Uh, dum, dumba. Dumba. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the first qualities mentioned in the Yes, yes. And um, I start to think about it, um, and um, also I think um, this is, uh, how to say, this is the same or no, uh, selfish, selfishness. Selfishness. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the root of it. That, it's root. That's the, that's the root of, uh, of, of that quality and other demonic qualities, because... You know, there, 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 are, there are gross things that obviously are attractive, but there's also this subtle thing of respect. That's a big thing, and and for the demons that they, you know, if you if you slight them, then they can kill you. You know, if they're you know. so so that the name and fame is a big thing because that's really you know that um, you know feeds the false ego, you know, and so so. Uh, that that's that's the root of this dumba, where they want to seem to be this or seem to be that. They want to try to, and and often it's integrated into uh, how they, uh, you know, the modern demons, how they make money, because like this whole capitalism thing is is based on a fraud. They're selling you something that is not worth what it what it is. That there's to be a profit, you know, and they don't really care. Uh, like like uh, you know, I I take a lot of supplements because I'm old, you know. But but I, I try to make sure you know research and make sure that they're because there's no way, there's, there's something in America called the FDA the Food and Drug Administration, which came in I don't know in the 40s and 30s because people were selling stuff that really really wasn't effective or was even harmful to people so they had to have a government you know say well this is is this really is this drug really going to do what it's going to do and not harm safe and effective that's that's the whole thing. safe and effective sometimes it's safe but it's just a it's not effective. Sometimes effective, but it kills you, you know, so. <laughs> so anyway, so, but there's this whole supplement industry that's not regulated, you know, because it's too much for them to test, and it's, you know, they're, they're, they're too cheap. The, the medications cost hundreds of dollars, but the supplements can cost a few pennies, but if you sell enough of them, you make a lot of money. So anyway, that's uh, that's part of what uh, this, this hypocrisy is, is. Is is part of the fraud that that is part of being being a demon. You you you're not what you think you you know you're you're not what you pretend to be, and so uh, that's why it's so you know there's so many qualities of the demons. But this is one of the main ones, Dhamma, is that they all puff themselves up to be something. It's like you read the Krishna book. You know, and you got all these demons. I, I, you're always amazing because, you, like, like uh, one of my favorite passages, Dhenukasra, you know, killing of Dhenukasra. So this is a typical thing. Prabhupada says, yes, in that Talafaris, ta Taliban, uh, uh, Dhenukasra lived there with his friends and associates, you know, <laughs> other other donkeys and mules. So then he gets killed, right? And he gets, you know, easily they throw him up into the top of the tree, and then all these friends and associates come running. To avenge him. Well, don't they get the idea? Well, maybe we should run away rather than run. <laughs> but they have this idea, you know. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Oh, we'll, you know, because they they believe their own propaganda that we're all these powerful donkeys. We'll just take care of, them. and they all get killed. So, so that that dumba is central to the demonic mentality. Self itself, uh, puffing oneself up, and then believing, even believing some of your lies about yourself. This also happens, you know, it's very hazardous. So that's, that's what ha happens to all these demons. But you, you read the Bhagavad Gita, you see Dumbo, Darpo, Bhimanascha is you know, one of the first verses, and it's mentioned often. Uh, you just mentioned uh, about uh, these demons of Vrindavan, and remember, uh, remind, um, uh, that uh, it reminded me, uh, maybe Bhakti Chaitanya Swami Maharaj has, has a seminar about um, demons of Vrindavan is our qualities. Oh, yes. You know, there's a whole list by Bhaktivinoda Thakur made of this demon. You, if, you, if you hear about killing a demon, this cures this bad quality. You yes, have. yes, yes. You yes. know, <laughs> Putana is the false guru, I think, and you go on like that. 
Yeah, it's important to hear that. So this is very practical for us that um, we are like uh, this, you know, we have this quality. Yeah, we still have the quality. We should, uh, hear Krishna book. Uh, <laughs> 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 hear the death together. Uh, it's not only delightful to hear, but it also helps to curb our bad quality. All right, Vijay Krishna, Prabhu? Uh, yes, Oh, you're Prabhu. still there. Okay. Fire away. May I? Fa fire away. I'm ready. Yes, uh, thank you very much, your most kind uh, Dandavat Pranams. Prabhu, do you mind reading the last sentence of the purport again? All right, uh, verse 41. Sure. Last sentence of the purport. Is that what you say? Yes. Spiritual please. education changes one's consciousness so that one simply carries out the orders of the Supreme Lord and becomes free from the influence of the modes of material nature. Yes, thank you very much. Sure. Uh, 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 Prabhu, you know better than me that at least in your country, uh, material education is extremely expensive. If I want to become a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, I do need to pay a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, and spend a lot of time, so many years of study, uh, um, of studies. Yeah, so yeah. based on this, my question is, what about spiritual education? Do I need to pay anything for me to become um, spiritually educated? Or is it that is free of charge? Well, that is my question. Well, of course, Prabhupada didn't charge anything to come to his lectures. He certainly didn't charge anything to participate in the kirtan. So in one sense, yes, it's free. But when you actually get into it, you realize that you have to give everything. <laughs> in other words, if you really want the result, uh, yeah, then the full surrender, then it means you know, using your, uh, what is it, pranayarta diyavacha, your life force, your money, your intelligence, and your words. If you got anything else of value, I don't know what it could be. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, uh, it, it ultimately, it, it works completely when you completely surrender. That may not happen uh, this lifetime. You know, you may surrender sixty percent, seventy percent. You know, but no. It, it Krishna. What does Krishna say? He says. Uh, Wow. It's a famous verse. He's speaking to Yudhishthir uh, later in the, in the latter part of the 10th canon. And he says, To those I, who I show my, my complete mercy, my real mercy, I gradually take away all of their material assets. Well, I don't want to sign up for that one. What else you got? You know? <laughs> but then what happens is that his family doesn't like him anymore and kicks him out. <laughs> So he has no, no recourse but to take sannyas, basically, right, to, to surrender. So, so it's like that. When you, when you, Krishna consciousness is, is um, you can't really judge it by material values because then that's what people see. Oh, you, you people have missed out, you know? I mean, you, you're missing out on all of the fun. You know, this is when we, when we first joined, you know. You got, you, it's, I don't want any part of that, you know, like that. They're enjoying, but then when they when they when they're in trouble and they're really not enjoying, then they come and they see all the joyous devotees chanting and dancing, and and you know who have uh, practically nothing but the dotis and kirtas and saris on their back, so to speak, but they're much happier without that entanglement in the material world. So it, it, it's not expensive. The, the the modern educational system, the, the colleges and universities, especially in America are like a big scam because they, they you know you say oh you got to get a good education then you get a great job you know and, but and, you, and in order to get the education you got to go into debt when i was when i in 65 i spent a, a few months in in college and luckily i had a complete um, scholarship so i didn't go into debt but uh, the whole like a year was i don't know a couple of thousand dollars you know now it's like, you want to go to Chicago University? $30,000 a year. Oh, but we have this loan. Don't worry about it. You'll get your job, and, you know, and you'll be able to pay it back. Forty years later, people who didn't get the job, maybe they didn't even finish college, they're still trying to pay the loan. It's horrible. Even if, and if you even get into Social Security, they'll, they'll take part of your Social Security 
You know, you can't you can't call, you know declare bankruptcy and then try to work it. Out. It's it's a, it's a it's a total it's a total corruption of, of my, at least in America. Now other countries have other systems, because the whole thing like in this this state had some of the, uh, the we still have the universities, but now the fees and everything have gone up. But it used to be practically free, like USD, U, UC, US, what is it UCSD, or this whole uni, uh, California university system. Because they recognize the importance of educating people and, and, and having them you know, be part of the society. Uh, but now it, it, it's changed. So uh, it, it's very expensive. And oftentimes, you, you don't get what you're paying for. And you're paying the rest of your life trying to just hold it together. People are homeless who went, you know, went to college and got into debt. And now they can't pay the bill. So anyway, it's, it's, uh, things have degraded a lot. And... Um, but but you know, but Krishna conscious education you can do it at home. You just you know get the book, like you can buy that that you know the the, the uh, coming back book or whatever it is, and read at home and and get you know twelve million times better education, for for uh, two dollars five dollars whatever they you know, <laughs> and come to these classes. They're all free. I have hundreds of classes online. I've been doing this since eighty eighty three. Since I was 89, since I came here, and I'm not asking anything, you know. So, so yeah, it's, it it is free and it's freeing. It frees you from the bondage, so it's it's a, it's a good deal. Is that okay, Vijay? Oh, oh, Prabhu, better than okay, <laughs> as to be expected. A brilliant, if I may say it, answer to my question. Thank you very much. No, you Hare can't. You can't say that. I, I reject it. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. All right, one more comment from uh, Bhir Chandra Babu. I remember, uh, maybe, do you know this, this uh, there is Mataji Aruda, and uh, she, uh, she traveling in the world, and it, she was in Poland, and introduced that uh, she, uh, she has two t- kids, as if I remember, and uh, when uh, came time to go to school them yeah. uh, they go and maybe a few weeks and she decided no no it's not possible <laughs> this is like a, a slatter house <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, and she uh, teach the teach us uh, by shimad bhagavatam uh-huh. only shimad bhagavatam and um, one one of these kids uh, become PhD at seven, uh, 17 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so she was just teaching from Bhagavatam and yes. were able to become a PhD. There you go. That's the solution. Thank you, Mapu. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs>